I'm out of mana! I'm out of mana! For I am eternal! Hi, Cizrin here with another 3.15 Expedition League, and this is in fact Essence Drain. Once again, it somehow escaped the nerfs in a lot of ways. The only notable change is FAC was nerfed for the build, but we can actually avoid using FAC quite often, um, and there are some setups we'll still use it. But either way, the build is still very, very strong. Very, very strong, especially as a League starter, because it's incredibly strong early on. Now, some people do struggle scaling damage on this, and obviously everything got nerfed on damage, so you might feel like the damage is a little bit too low, but this is going to be a lot of people's favorite League starters, so I want to talk about it and uh, make a guide around it nonetheless. And we're showing off a little bit in the background here of uh, how you actually play the build, because Essence Strain isn't the easiest to play. So when you're playing this build, you throw Contagion down uh, first, generally, and then you Essence Drain into somewhere where you hit with the Contagion. And what Contagion in this build does is that, that it spreads the damage from your Essence Drain. So Contagion on its own does very little and Essence Drain on its own does very little. But together, they are a very, very high player speed build that is very, very strong. Uh, we're also using Blight to get Wither Stacks and Blight does a large amount of damage. This is a very, very strong boss build as well. However, if you're very new to the game, it might be pretty hard for you to do bosses on this because scaling the build can be a little bit difficult. But this is a build that you'll see a lot of racers and people speed running do like Awakener 8. People have done it in the Gauntlet and stuff like that. And it's incredibly strong. So if you're new to one of my guides, make sure you check the description and stuff. But also, um, I'll walk through it a little bit here. We do a step-by-step -step leveling process. So you can see that we're like taking normal lab here and you get to know exactly where we are allocating the skill points at what point. You don't have to wor worry about where to go. Um, and then we also have some like different trees for like a life build, for an energy shield build, uh, about cluster jewels. And we're going to be updating and adding a little bit more before we fully publish this video. Uh, but I'm going to record it now so that we have a lot of content for you before the league starts. A lot of the time I recommend leveling with Spellslinger. I'm not even going to put that in this video because frankly, I believe Spellslinger leveling is dead. However, it might be worth trying to level with Spellslinger Solrend and see how that goes. Maybe Spellslinger Solrend with Blight for single target could still feel okay for leveling. I don't know. I haven't played the new patch yet. However, here you can see different like, um, leveling gems, etc. And here you can see that generally like A will be replaced by A um, and like it gives you an inclination of like what is replacing what so you don't end up with like seven different skills. You can choose to replace Blight, for example, by Caustic Arrow. Uh, and I quite leveling, uh, quite like leveling with both Caustic Arrow and Toxic Rain Mines. So one notable thing uh, about the build is that FXC has been uh, nerfed. So early on, obviously, we have to use it. We don't have that many support gems. But later on, uh, Empower absolutely demolishes it. Arcane Surge seems to be slightly better, uh, but I don't know how good the uptime on the high level Arcane Surge should be. I'm trying to think about what the new mana cost of Essence Strain should be, but it actually might be worth running Arcane Surge over FXC now uh, because it's not very good. But either way, Empower level 4, insane gem now. This is literally a chase item for the build, and Empower level 3 is better already. So, something that uh, is a big difference from before is that quite often I, be, I would be recommending making Delirium Gloves um, like this. And Delirium Gloves, the suck of the gems, deal 30% more damage over time. Obviously, this is really, really good. And normally, what we would do, we have two choices. We can either get a glove that just has the Delirium mod as a suffix, and then Multi-Mod, plus one AoE, and plus one projectile, giving it plus two for Essence Strain. However, Blight is already incredibly hard on our mana. So now, having a 6th thing Blight, I'm pretty sure it's just completely out of the question. So, what I think we recommend instead is actually 6th thing King or Essence Strain, and then obviously Empower being really, really nice. And now we can have a 4th thing Blight that is going to be incredibly strong. So, sadly, 
Uh, we are not going to be looking for a plus level of uh, socketed projectile gems anymore. Before, you could have plus two projectile and plus two AOE being plus four for uh, essence drain. However, we are going to be looking for a plus two level of socketed AOE gems, which we can get um, fairly reasonably. Obviously, not the cheapest crafting in the game, and this is a very end game thing, but it's very important to mention because this is part of how we scale the damage end game. And the way you would do this, you would use a Essence of Delirium on, say, Fingerless Silk Gloves. And now, you would do Suffixes Cannot Be Changed, and then use a Veiled Chaos Orb. And then you would be hoping that you unveil plus two level of socketed AoE gems. You can, of course, also just craft plus one level, and that is going to be strong as well. But it is like 12% more damage per level. So, this would be a really, really good way to do this, because now we have a four link play, and that mana we might be able to handle... And uh, the mana on a 6 thing Essence Strain should be fine. Now, we used to and probably still have some notes uh, remaining about uh, Ailment Immunity. We're going to try to get rid of all of that. But uh, Ailment Immunity is going to be incredibly hard to get on this build. So we are not going to include that. However, especially for Energy Shield builds, picking up a Dream Fragments and trying to fit that would be a really, really good choice for Endgame. So that you're Freeze Immune. So let's take a look at a lot of the early game items. So basically early on getting uh, a wand with a like 20% damage over time for Chaos Damage Over Time Multiplier would be really, really good. Or getting plus one level of all Chaos Spell Skill Gems. These are very, very easy to get by uh, you can do the uh, gem recipe, which is 40% quality of Chaos specific gems and a wand. And I have a video explaining how to use this. Um, but also using Aberrant Fossils, an item level 2 Driftwood ones early. Very, very easy. Um, and again, check out the video for the gem recipe. Other than that, obviously, all you need early on is life and resist. Spell damage is good and uh, stuff like that. But yeah, that is all you need. Again, never get too tied down to what item I'm showing the resist on. The only important thing is to get resist capped. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to have it on a ring. Um, at zero step, huge, obviously getting as much dodge as possible, and later on we'll also be going block. However, Rumi's got nerfed, I would probably still use it early on just to get a little more, uh, and, and later on you can get fully blocked up. But you will need Glancing Blows. And Glancing Blows is something that we don't really take unless we have a life or energy shield on block shield. Here we can see like a mid game CI setup and again a lot of the items have like a lot of notes on them loads of extra explanations to make sure that the guide is even easier uh, to understand and speaking of notes if you do have any questions most of it is addressed here in our comprehensive notes section so make sure you check that as well um, one of the most important things for example is to use a jade flask on a trickster it is a pinnacle part of the build and that is because of ghost dance which gives you energy shield based on your evasion when you're hit we want a large amount of evasion. Restless Ward and Sintrek are really, really good pickups early for this build. They give you a large amount of energy shield early and you don't have to roll all your own items then. So definitely keep a lookout on those. And generally the build has fairly easy to understand items. One item that can be a little bit more complicated are like this jewel with the Thread of Hope. Thread of Hope lets you take face acrobatics. So you would take face acrobatics and a Hunter's Gambit and obviously... Uh, it's good that you don't have to take acrobatics because this build um, would lose a lot of energy shield and block, which you don't want. But base acro, very, very strong for the build. So let's go through the checklist. And for skill gems, this build should be fairly easy to fit everything. It's not like a uh, super, super tight build. Next up with the mana requirements, however, obviously this is changing a lot. And it's very hard for me to answer on every build because this isn't something we've played with the new changes. So how will the mana be? We don't fully know. Um, that's why I uh, mentioned the stuff about mitigating the mana cost by 4 linking blade instead of 6 linking it. And the mana on Essence Drain shouldn't feel too bad because obviously we are getting a large amount of mana back from Patient Reaper. Patient Reaper is incredibly strong, especially with like Cinder Swallow nerf. Trickster is really, really cool now. And uh, early on, taking Soul Siphon might be an idea if you feel like mana is very rough. Soul Siphon is uh, at the Trickster start. Bandit for the build is skill point. However, do remember taking a Lyra early on is never really a mistake. Getting resist capped early and getting the mana regen can always be good. And you can respect later for 20 regrets and an Onyx amulet. And the Pantheon for this build is Solaris and Relic Cash. What quality of life and defense is available? Well, Trickster is a powerhouse of defense. Incredibly strong. 
close downs and escape artist gives us such a large amount of defense and that is why we use the sadist carb on the chest because of escape artist because the evasion on the chest will give us flat energy shield so a really well rolled sadist carb ends up being over a 700 es val rate earlier so it's, it's just really really strong from ghost dance when we have a large amount of evasion this will make us feel borderline immortal because we just get such a large amount of energy shield back and then when we finally get energy shield on block at the late game we are incredibly tanky once you have energy shield on blocking glancing blows being able to fit crab barrier might need to like play around with enlightens and stuff like that maybe even pick up some restoration effect because of the new mana changes but crab barrier is incredibly strong because while you're taking damage through glancing blows you don't lose your crab barrier so this is an incredibly strong build again i do want to say that it is uh, going to be a little bit weird since we are losing damage and some people already struggle on scaling the build in the end game but very very fast very solidly started to make currency for other builds and uh We've seen some insane things with this build in the past and yeah, not as nerfed as other builds. So a very, very good choice as a starter. I hope you guys enjoyed yet yeah, another Essence Train build. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you like the videos and they uh, help you out. But uh, more importantly, try to die less than I do.